Hey guys, Jeremy here from School of Wok Covent Garden. It's Wok Wednesdays or Wok Less Wednesdays because I'm using a saucepan today, but it's all about your curry sauce that everyone's been asking for, except far better and with fish balls. So Hong Kong style fish balls, curried fish balls, is like this, like one of the most popular street food dishes out there. But making it from scratch at home, it's always tastier, I think. Start with the prawns, and the prawns actually are there to help bind the mix a little bit better, because just fish fillet, it's almost a little bit too flaky. You can use any type of white fish fillet to go in to this fish sort of meatball mix. Actually in Hong Kong, the traditional fish is actually eel, or a type of eel. It's longer, and what they use is, they use the meat for the fish balls and the skin to make crispy fish skin, sort of crisps. And then we've got some seasoning ingredients. Good pinch of salt. Got some sea salt. Balance that out with a pinch of sugar. Bring out the sweetness of the fish and the prawns. Some white pepper. And a good drizzle of sesame oil. Now I'm gonna blitz that, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of sort of corn flour and water to bind it even more. Now in Hong Kong you get this in not just the street food but also sort of steamboat and hot pot and different ways but you do get a lot of processed fish balls in Hong Kong now and the best absolutely is always to make it fresh like this. I'm going to make a corn flour paste just to get that corn flour sort of mixed into the fish balls a bit better than if I was just to, just to pour that straight in in one go. So just pour that into there. And again, that just helps to bind the mix a little. Your corn flour paste and some egg white just to help bind that mix. Blitz again. Blitz again. <laughs> and you can see that just a little bit of fish and prawn makes up a quite a big meal. You've got your minced up fish and prawn mix. And actually what it's best to do is just sort of shape these and cook them straight away. And then you can, if you've got lots of mix like this, you can freeze some, have it as a quick lunch or dinner or snack, or just cook them all at the same time. Even just something as simple as this, this sort of boiled fish cake or fish ball. It's very tasty. Thanks, Lee, for that term, boiled fish cake. Right, so my mix is ready, nice and lightly seasoned. I'm just bringing this to boil. You can either just shape and boil as you go. I've got some cold water here, uh, just for my hands to, to help me shape these uh, balls. Or you can have a tray, and I, I, as I'm waiting for this to boil, I'll get a tray and just get all my fish balls ready. So just, you wanna go for, I guess, small golf ball sized pieces. And I would say it's always better to cook them here from fresh, even if you're going to freeze them, because then once they've cooked and you cool them down and freeze them, they just keep their shape. So 
They won't take long to cook at all. Bring your water to boil and then just pop them straight into it. They should take sort of two to three minutes to cook up. They're in, they should sort of start to float as they're starting to cook. So give them a couple of minutes and they'll do that. You can see now, they're just sort of lifting off the bottom of the pan and appearing at the top of the water and it's quite fun. At that point, you know that those fish balls are cooked because all the sort of air pockets inside them are allowing them to float. And I've just got some cold water nearby. That'll just stop them from cooking. So, onto the sauce. <coughs> For some reason in the school we have the most giant onions you can ever find. I only need really about 100 grams of onion for this sauce, so... Oh, there's my mum texting me. Um, so, I'm going to go for a quarter of this. We want it to be nice and finely diced. Of course, if you had a normal sized onion, you could just use one. And with the fish balls, Hong Kong style, definitely you need the curry sauce. But if you were just making those fish balls for some steamboat or to go into a noodle soup, that's absolutely fine. You've already done that job. A couple of cloves of garlic. I'm going to cook this all into the same sauce, so I'll just throw those straight in with the onions. As so long as you're careful when you're frying the onions, then you won't burn that garlic. A couple of chilies. If you want this to go into sauce, you don't want it to be too hot, then you can take the sort of membrane and the seeds out, just to add that chilli flavour. Quite nice to keep some chilli aside for garnish later. Okay, so that's all my chopping done. That's my base for my curry sauce. I've got some fresh curry leaves here. And now it's just sort of a compiling job in this pan. So I'm going to start off my curry sauce by just frying and softening my onions and garlic. Once they're sort of frying, I can make up a quick curry paste. That paste will go in and then we'll finish it off with the liquid, with the chicken stock and the sauce. So my onions and garlic go in. You want to lightly fry your onions and garlic. I don't mind if it gets a little colour in it. I'm waiting to put the chilies in just before my paste along with my curry leaves. Fresh curry leaves are amazing. They've got this sort of natural curry flavour or smell. It's the ar aromatics that really makes them work. I'm going to make up a paste whilst that's cooking. So a good tablespoon of madras curry powder. I'm going to go for a quarter of a teaspoon of chilli powder, not too much and roughly a tablespoon of light soy sauce for some salty flavour. Give that a good mix through. So we're making a paste out of that curry powder and light soy. The only thing I'm going to add to this paste is a bit of coconut milk. So you could use coconut milk or even condensed milk for this as well. So that is my base flavour to the curry sauce. My onions, they're browned nicely. So my chilli's going in. And then a whole load of curry leaves. And they cook very quickly. You know, I'll start to sort of crackle a little on the bottom of that pan. So give those a stir through. 
And the curry leaves are my addition. You wouldn't necessarily get that in a street food curry fish ball stand. Curry paste. And what you want to do is just bubble up that curry paste and cook that sort of raw curry powder for a minute or so before you add the rest of the liquid. Whoa, smells great. So at this point, where your curry paste is so it's slightly drying out, starting to stick to the bottom of the pan a little. The oil's starting to separate out of that paste. That's when we start to add your chicken stock. You just gradually add it, take all the goodness off the bottom of the pan. Let that bubble away, add a bit more, and bring that to a boil. So you can either put your seasoning, so salt and sugar, into the curry paste or at this stage. So a good pinch of salt or sea salt. So you do want to actually accentuate that coconut milk. So a good almost teaspoon of sugar will do that. You want to reduce this by about half. I've gone with all the chicken stock now. And once it's half reduced, then I'll thicken that up and get ready to put my fish balls in. So whilst your curry sauce is cooking away, Time for a cup of tea, or of your into your cleaning up and clean up as you go in. I've got a tablespoon of fish sauce in there just to to give it that last bit of salty flavour, and then some corn flour paste. I won't need all of this. I'm just going to mix that nicely, and this is to thicken up your sauce. And actually this curry sauce you can use for a lot of different things and there's this almost like Chinese curry sauce that everyone seems to love. And this is like a soup top version of that. So I'm going to start to thicken this up with this corn flour paste. I don't like it to be too thick so I'm just going to let that bubble through first and then test it for consistency. That's a good sort of dripping consistency and it will thicken up as I'm cooking the rest. Your fish balls can just go straight into your curry sauce. I've got more fish balls here as well, and if I wanted to just boil some and have them sort of different colours, that's also quite nice. So I'm just going to baste these fish balls well and reheat them in the curry sauce. Two to three minutes, and this dish is done. The fish balls have had two or three minutes, and I've just been basting the sauce over the top of them. They've got a great colour, and it's the texture of that sauce is really sort of thickened up nicely now. And they are done. The rest of the fish balls are just reheating in some boiling water there. So the idea of these fish balls is they are fish, but because of the prawn, it should have a sort of still have a nice sort of bite. You can just pour that over the top. So vibrant from that curry powder and that turmeric in there. So that is how you bring street food home, guys. So the best way to do this is just close your eyes and imagine you're in Hong Kong. Mmm, really nice soft bite. And think about cooking it at home that I absolutely love is that it hasn't got that sort of rubbery texture that the processed Hong Kong fish balls have. Could eat that all day. It's really light and the curry flavour just works with the spice and the sweetness. Absolutely delicious. If you like this recipe and you want to learn more, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.